Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tally's Marine Tales where we talk about everything marine biology, ocean science, academia and everything in between. Today we're taking a little bit of a science dive and I'd like to pose the questions to you. Have you ever wondered where turtles go when they're in the ocean? Or how far do sharks swim? Or perhaps even does a fish spend its whole life living in the same place? These are the kinds of questions that have been vexing marine biologists for a number of years now, but they're really difficult to answer because it's really difficult to track ocean animals. For example, if you want to track a pride of lions, all you need to do is follow them across the plains of Africa, or even use a GPS tag that you can put onto these animals and you can track them using that. However, if you're trying to track an ocean animal that lives in this huge three-dimensional body of water and you're just a silly little human with two legs that can't breathe underwater, you can't really follow them underwater. And also we can't use these GPS tags because GPS signals don't travel through seawater. So what are we supposed to do? These are the kinds of questions I'll be tackling today. I'll talk about some of the amazing technologies that have come about in recent years, allowing marine biologists like myself to track ocean animals. We'll talk about some of the really cool discoveries that have been made, and also how you can get involved through an initiative called Wildlife Collections. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy the video. Hit the like button, subscribe button, and let's get into it. So one of the earliest kind of technologies um, that started a couple of decades ago and actually is still being used today falls under a tag recapture design and it features a really simple tag. It's basically a piece of plastic. It doesn't transmit any kind of signal, um, but it has a unique number that's printed on the outside of the tag. You attach this tag to your ocean animal that has been caught in some way. You release the animal back into the ocean and you hope like hell that somebody somewhere is going to recatch this animal, report it to you and let you know when and where they've recaught the animal. So the pros to this technology is that it's really simple, cheap, easy to use. You can even get normal people um, to tag the fish. They don't necessarily have to be scientists. However, as you might be able to see, there are a number of cons associated with this type of technology. It's limited to species that are commonly caught either by recreational fishermen or even in commercial fisheries, but it has to be a species that is often caught. You often rely on people to report the recapture to you, which sometimes people don't do that. It's a huge game of chance. Um, you're really hoping that a tagged individual is going to be recaught and the recapture rates are usually pretty low. I think the highest kind of recapture rate you can hope for is 10% of the individuals that you tagged initially, but usually it's lower than this. Usually only between one to 5% of individuals that you tag get recaught. So you have to tag a large number of individuals in order for you to get any kinds of insights. And the insights that you do gain are generally quite limited. I mean, you only really know where you tag the fish, where it was caught again, and you don't really know what the animal was doing in between. But despite this, there are a number of really cool things that we've managed to discover about how um, animals move around in the ocean. So here in South Africa, where I live, we have this really cool citizen science program called the Ori Tag program, where recreational fishermen are trained to um, tag fish, sharks, stingrays using these little plastic tags and they report to um, this program when they recapture these individuals. Now this program has been running for a number of years and there have been over 300,000 individuals tagged which is pretty incredible and as you might guess there have been some really cool things that have come out of this project. Firstly there was a ragged tooth shark. Now this is quite a big shark with these scary skew teeth hence the name ragged tooth. Um, but this shark was tagged all the way back in 2001 and was recaptured 17 years later in 2018. And it was recaptured in a pretty similar place to where it was initially tagged, only about 200 kilometers away. Now, as I said, we don't know what this individual was doing within those 17 years. We don't know if it moved away or if it stayed in the area, but we do know that 17 years later, it was still here. So this is still a pretty important area to it. It's probably its long-term home, which is a really cool insight to gain for a big shark. But when we look at the longest distances traveled, there was a tiger shark that traveled a maximum distance of over 4,000 kilometers 
But surprisingly, the species that takes the cake is actually a yellowfin tuna with an individual that traveled a maximum of 5,600 kilometers. This is longer than if you had to travel from the east coast to the west coast of the United States of America. How incredible is that? So as time went on, luckily technology started to develop and there were a couple of new tools that started coming onto the market and marine biologists could start using something called satellite tags to track the movements of marine animals. These are usually pretty big and bulky tags, but they do transmit signals and they can connect to the satellites that orbit our atmosphere. Now these tags can collect information um, on individuals when they're swimming within the water. For example, they usually collect information like depth or temperature of the water. And they also can use the light levels and the time of sunrise and sunset to get a rough positional estimate of where the animal is in our oceans. But the main strength of this type of technology is when animals surface. So that's why it's often used on things like sea turtles who need to come up to breathe. Because when these satellite tags come up out of the water, that's when they connect to the satellites. That's when they transmit the information that it's collected. And that's also when you can get a better positional estimate of where this animal is occurring. But it's still pretty rough. You only generally know a radius of a couple of kilometers where the animal is. So this type of technology is made Mainly used to track long distance migrations and is not really helpful if you're trying to track an individual that lives in one small area for its whole life. So a satellite tag was used to track the longest distance recorded for any fish in the ocean. Back in 2011 researchers tagged a whale shark who they named Anne. Now whale sharks are the biggest fish in the ocean reaching up to 12 meters in length. These researchers tracked the movements of Anne for three years and she was found to travel just over 20,000 kilometers within those three years. This put whale sharks as one of the creatures that roamed the most widely along with things like leatherback sea turtles, gray whales and arctic terns. So these are the kinds of insights that you can gain from this technology. And as I mentioned, it's used on sea turtles quite a lot and there was a really cool story um, a couple of years ago the, our local aquarium here in South Africa released a loggerhead turtle called Yashi. She was in the aquarium for a number of years, but they decided to release her. They put a satellite tag on, the, on her and they tracked her movements. And she went all the way from Cape Town across the ocean to Australia. And that's kind of where they think she came from originally and where she was born. So this was a really fun story to track. And if you want your own sea turtle to track, um, there's a really cool initiative called Wildlife Collections and you get these beautiful bracelets. So I got the turtle one, see if it will focus on that. Um, so I wear this bracelet every day, but the best part is that along with the bracelet comes your own turtle that you can track. So I got um, Macy, who is actually really cool. It's a rare interbreed between a hawksbill and a green turtle. And I also got Sandy, who is a loggerhead turtle. And these are pretty cool because these turtles are currently swimming around with a satellite tag on them somewhere in the world and all you need to do is i hope you guys can see this scan the qr code um, and you can see where these turtles are so i actually haven't checked up on them in a while so let's see where who did i scan where macy is okay so this is what it opens up as so you can see um, it tells you the latest location which was taken July 21st, it was a little while ago, maybe her tag has died now, but it gives you all of her, wow, she actually traveled quite a far away away. So we're here um, just below Miami, I think in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and all of these sort of dots are where, where, they, where they got positional fixes on her. So you can see where she liked to spend her time. And she seems like this was her home, <laughs> wherever that is. Um, that's clearly where she liked to live. So yeah, these are, this, this is a really, really cool initiative. Um, and if this is something you guys are interested in, I have an affiliate link. You can find it down below and you'll get a discount on your beautiful bracelet and your turtle. So go check it out. But now, what if you want to track ocean animals that don't come to the surface or don't swim far distances? For example, like stingrays who live on the bottom of the ocean floor. <laughs> 
well again luckily technology has moved on and there's a really cool type of technology called acoustic telemetry that I myself use to track the movements of stingrays. This technology has become super popular within the past two to three decades and it's also it's pretty simple. Um, if you think of the word acoustic telemetry, acoustic meaning noise, um, so we use basically noise signals that can travel through the water column so you can track these animals as they move underwater which is really great. So you have these tags that are usually about the size of your thumb or smaller that send out uniquely coded pulses of noise um, and you attach these to your animals and one of the biggest benefits of this technology is you can surgically implant it into the animal so that it's not this big bulky thing attached to the outside of the animal. It's pretty like it's a minimally invasive technology after the surgery procedure and then essentially you're giving an animal a voice and it starts to shout I'm here I'm here although at a very high frequency so you don't actually hear it but you do have these listening devices that can hear those noise signals so you can track these animals. So this is really, really cool because you can start to answer questions like, do individuals live in the same place all the time? Do they perhaps live in one place during the daytime, one place during the nighttime? What kind of habitat do they like to use? All these more fine scale questions we can start to answer with passive acoustic telemetry. And so this is why I love using this technology. Currently, I'm working on tracking the movements of 91 different stingrays of four different species along our South African coastline. And it's really cool because we're identifying migration patterns of these stingrays for the first time. We're looking at their fine scale habitat use. Do they occur within marine protected areas? Are they being protected? Are they not being protected? These are all kinds of questions that we're starting to look at. So that was a very brief whirlwind tour through some of the types of tracking technologies that we as marine biologists use to figure out where the heck do ocean animals move around. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, please pop it down in the comments below. If you'd like to see more of this sciencey type of con content, please also let me know down below. And yeah, if you're interested in tracking your own turtle, don't forget to check out the link to Wildlife Collections. And until next time, I hope you have a very happy day.